I'm here with Dr. Tish Jennings, author of Mindfulness for Teachers, a new book that's coming out. So Tish, tell us a little bit about your book and about your expertise. Okay, thank you. Well, I'm very excited about this book because I think it's gonna make a big difference uh, in teachers' lives. Today, teachers are under a lot of stress. In fact, you may not know this, but 50% of teachers are leaving the profession within five years. Oh my goodness. Due to burnout. And uh, I was a teacher myself for 22 years, and I had been practicing meditation all that time. So I knew my mindfulness practice was helping me, but I didn't know how to explain that. And then when I got into teacher education and started teaching other people to become teachers, uh, I spent many years observing classrooms and teaching classroom management. And I started noticing, as I was observing them, um, how their own um, stress and their own emotions were interfering with their teaching. And so I became very curious about this phenomenon and I went back to school and got my doctorate and I studied stress. And as I learned more about how the stress response works and why we get stressed out, all of a sudden it all made sense to me. And I started exploring uh, mindfulness-based approaches to support teachers in their teaching and learning so that they could be more present and less reactive in situations in the classroom. So um, over the last 10 years or so, I've been exploring this question, doing research, developing programs, and this book is a culmination of that last decade of my um, work in research and development. So it's, it's an exciting uh, thing to have it finally out. So with all these programs, what is the biggest problem you, you see or you feel is when a teacher comes to the classroom with kids? Well, imagine yourself in a classroom full of 25, 30 young people of various you know, think about whatever Before age you want to, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you uh, have a lot of demands because you have to get through a certain amount of academic material with these students. You have to get them to understand this. You also have to have, they also have to be paying attention to you. And you also have to have them engaged in their learning. Um, at the same time, you cannot leave the classroom. You're basically a captive in that room. The kids are also captives in that room. And when you put people in rooms and you tell them they can't leave, it, it turns up the volume on their, their emotions and their right. stress. And so it, is an amp it has an amplifying effect. And so if any little thing happens, a student does something they're not supposed to do, a conflict occurs between the students, if you imagine all the emotional dimensions of that classroom, um, it can become a little pressure cooker. And what happens when you're teaching is your attention is completely outwardly directed. You have to think about the content you're teaching, you have to be paying attention to every student in your classroom. So you don't notice how your body is starting to get tense. You don't notice that you're starting to become frustrated because you have to tune into your body to notice that. But if you're so outwardly directed, it's hard to recognize that. And so all of a sudden you find yourself exploding and you don't know why. Um, and that's not good for teaching and learning because once the adult starts to become angry, there's two reactions students tend to have. They either become fearful because you can imagine an angry teacher could be scary, or they become defiant. Like, why is she getting mad at us? We didn't do anything. You know, right. so you've got those two attitudes that respond to this teacher who's getting frustrated, and then you've got conflicts, then you've got power struggles, then you've got, and nobody's learning, because their fight, flight, or freeze response has been triggered, and their prefrontal cortex has gone offline, and you can't learn under those situations. And what, ha what teachers tend to do, which is, doesn't help, is just to become more and more emphatic about them you know, trying to control the situation, which just it makes the, the problem worse. And so I think one of the big reasons we're having problems in schools today is that there's high levels of stress for both the teacher and the students. And teachers, are, it makes it hard to teach, it makes it hard to learn. How do we solve the problem how do we actually make teachers more mindful? Is it teaching it in, in, in universities? Or I know they're doing it at the Curry School, at the Contemplative Sciences Center, and you're well, involved in that. So tell us what you're doing there. This class I have to go teach yeah. at, soon. Uh, it is a classroom management class, and it's a new class here at the Curry School, and it combines all the information in this book. In fact, that's a textbook for this class. And it basically, I'm teaching these uh, students who are going to become elementary teachers how to be more aware of themselves and how to be more self-regulated so that they can manage student behavior more effectively. Because the, f the first step in the ability to manage a classroom is to manage yourself. And nobody has really talked about that 
in education right. before, that it's the teacher's own self-regulation that is critical to their ability to manage their classroom. Once the adults have that, then they are role models for the students, and the students learn that through the modeling, through the scaffolding, through the way that the teachers respond to them in situations they're modeling. Um, so here's another example. I'm a teacher, I'm feeling stressed out, my students are bothering me, somebody's doing something I don't like, I can say, I notice that I'm feeling really stressed right now and I need to take some breath, so I'm going to stop and I'm going to take some breaths right now so that I can teach. And what, what, you, what happens when you do that in front of a class of students is they go, oh, <laughs> I'm going to oh, do it too. I should do. And so you're modeling how to recognize when you're feeling stressed, how to, what to do about it, instead of saying, all you students are making me stressed out, you know, instead of blaming somebody else. So the else. teacher can't recognize their own feelings. It's going to be difficult for them to model how, to how, the, for how the children should recognize their feelings. Because a lot of kids, it, it would be good if kids could say, I'm feeling anxious right now, or I'm feeling angry, or I'm feeling sad. I don't think that, that ever went on in my school. It's well, if like you can't do that, then you can't regulate it. Right. If you don't recognize how you're feeling, your feelings can take you over, basically. And that's when you have situations where people are out of control because they're not able to notice, oh, I'm feeling stressed out right now. I think what, the reason why mindfulness is so helpful is it allows you to, ref to take the time and be aware that your thoughts are, not, are just thoughts, that your feelings are just thoughts, and you can have choices about how you want to respond to those. So it, you're, it sort of helps you override your automatic tendencies to behave in certain ways when you're feeling a certain way. But it's a learned skill. Absolutely.